Hi, this is Tim Von Rieden with cgcookie.com, and welcome to part 2 of the Getting Started with GIMP series. And in this video tutorial, I will be going through the basic layout when the screen opens for the first time. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up GIMP. And when it opens up, this is the screen that will be shown. So right away, you can kind of see how GIMP breaks itself into three separate sections. Or, if you want to call them windows. So the three that are here are the toolbox, which is the one on the far left, the middle one, which is mainly your canvas or document window, and your right one, which contains your windows and tabs. You may have also noticed that when I'm scrolling between the three windows, that one is becoming active, and you can tell that because the X minus and plus on the top right, top left corner are being shown in color rather than being grayed out. And those are your minimize, full screen, and close. And if you want to edit the actual size of these windows, all you do is you grab a little, I guess you want to call it a grabber in the bottom right corner, and you can move it and change the size, make it larger, smaller, however you would like. But I'm going to keep mine right around here. And these are open windows, so you can move them anywhere you want while you're working, but I like to keep them kind of at a full screen right next to each other. So the first one I'm going to go through is the toolbox. So on the far left, the toolbox is what it says. It holds your tools. So up here, there are collectively, I believe, 33, and each of them holds their own function and purpose. And you can see if I, while well, I'm kind of going through them, if I hover over one long enough, it'll give you a small description as well as the keyboard shortcut on the very far right. So like for the paintbrush, it'll tell you what it does and that the keyboard shortcut is P. So if I'm on my keyboard, you can see how I can toggle between different ones just based on the keyboard shortcut. So I would definitely find out which tool to use the most and then get used to using their keyboard shortcut. It'll make your conception process much faster. So another thing you may have noticed is when I click on each of the tools, a different sub-menu appears under it. So things like for the paintbrush, you can see how I can change different settings based on that paintbrush tool, such as the opacity, the scale. If you're using a tablet, you can click this little arrow next to brush dynamics, and you can edit different settings based on um, the sensitivity of your tablet and pen. So this is definitely a big one to kind of get used to. Scroll through your opacity. You can actually change what brush you're using just clicking on that little symbol right there which acts as pretty much a sample of what current brush you're using. So you can see if I click on another one, it'll give you a little sample of what the brush will look like when you're actually drawing on your canvas. So the next tool I'm going to go to is your eraser tool, which is Shift E. And it pretty much has the same sub-menu options as the brush. There are some differences, but just know that it acts very similar to the brush, except for the fact that it erases. So the next ones are the selection tools. And this is you want to select something in your image that you either want to move or edit. And it would be R for your first one, which would be a rectangle select. E if you want more of a circular selection tool. Or F for a free select tool, which pretty much means you draw out a shape. And whatever is in that shape that you've drawn will be selected. The next one will be your move tool, which is M. And it's this one with the four arrows. And that pretty much moves something in your layer or whatsoever is selected. Um, the transform tools, which would be rotate, which is shift R, and that's if you want to rotate a single layer. And then the one right next to it would be the scale tool, which is uh, shift T, and that'll scale the selection. And the last one I'm going to go through is the eyedropper, which I believe is O, and that pretty much picks up a color on your canvas. And the keyboard shortcut um, for that, if you don't want to put your hand all the way to O, is you can hold control and it'll do the same function. So those are the tools. I would definitely get used to um, not only the keyboard shortcut for them, but actually clicking on them, looking at their sub-menu and editing them, seeing what that does when you're actually working on a piece and how it affects it. But for now, those are the basics and we're going to go on to the middle one. So this middle window is your main window. And if I really quick create a new document just by going File New, I'll just say OK for now, you can see how it puts in a canvas, and this is what you'll be working on for the rest of your time in GIMP. 
And if you ever need something, and if it's not in the toolbox, it'll be on this top bar up here. And most of these settings are, will edit your image as a whole. So if you want to thing, do things like rotate it, change the hue saturation, put a filter on it, um, I would definitely familiarize yourself with each of these option, options, just kind of hovering over them, seeing what each of these hold and what each of them do. The main ones you need to know are the file, under file, you can create a new one, you can save it, you can close one, edit, undo, redo, copy, paste, preferences, keyboard shortcuts, select, all or none are kind of the big ones. Um, in view, pretty much editing the window and what you're being able to see, what you don't want to see. Image, which if you go to transform, that's where you can rotate and things like uh, merging layers together. Layer, this is kind of a, you don't need to go to this one as much because you have the layers menu open over here. But this one, this is where you could go if you really didn't know where to find something about layers. So you can make a new one, duplicate, delete, stack. Under colors, this is where you can get your hue saturation. Tools, so just kind of another shortcut if you don't um, know where to go over here, you have a menu right up here, and then you can find your tools and paint tools. Next to that is the filters, and for this, there's a lot of them, and they each have a very, very unique function that you kind of have to go through and play with on your own and figure out what each of them do and how it would be beneficial to know what each of these do if you need to use it in your piece. Um, windows. Um, I'll go through that in just a second and then help so if you ever have a question that you can't find in GIMP you just go to help click it and then type in your question so that is the main window and pretty much what you'll be seeing in this window is your canvas and this is where you're, what you're gonna be staring at most of the time that you're in GIMP so lastly is the windows and tabs menu on the very right and these um, can change and you definitely want to edit them so it fits you. So things like um, pulling tabs out or putting tabs in. So things like layers. Let's say you didn't want the layers tab in here. If you go in here and select the bold part of layers and drag it out, you are pulling that window out and now it's a separate window all its own. But let's say you didn't want to do that and you actually want to put the layers back in there and you're moving this in there but it won't work. Well that's because you have to grab that bold um, lettering of layers and then drag it back in and there we go you can see how the tab was added as well so these also have tabs as well as the far left you can add different tabs and to do that you click this little arrow pointing left and then you can do add tab and from there let's say we wanted the brushes over here as well you can see how it added a tab for the brushes and if you don't want it anymore all you do is grab it take it out and exit out so for me, I'm going to leave the layers up there. And if you want to add a tab, like what I'm going to do right now, just go to Add Tab. And I like to have my colors up, but I like to have some swatches so I can just pick and go. And I'm going to put this one up here next to my layers. And if I don't want things like, I really don't want the gradient tab on there, I can go ahead and delete that as well as my patterns. That way we're just adding a little bit more space for the brushes to be shown. Okay, so then that is pretty much the right window. It's very editable and I would definitely go through the different tabs you can add and see which ones you're most comfortable with. And if you don't know how um, else to add it, if you, if you forget that this little arrows right here, you can go to Windows at the very in the middle of the screen and go to dockable dialogues and then find the one that you want so if I want colors back again and there we go and then take it out and delete it if you don't want so that was the brief overview of the layout in GIMP and I would definitely recommend going in and really knowing what each of these options and selections can do because you might be able to get away with just using like the paintbrush and eraser but then you're not really growing as an artist. You really need to find out what all these different settings do and options because the more you know the easier it'll become to create pieces and 
you'll just have that knowledge stored in your mind for future use. So I hope you learned something, and if you have a question, just leave it below in the comments. And thanks for watching.